Today, a lot of attention is given to the issue of climate change, and rightly so. But I'm not here to talk about carbon emissions. Instead, I want to focus your attention on a different problem that has also reached epidemic levels. I call it communicative climate change. And there is a pervasive and very insidious substance in our communicative climate contributing to this change. It often appears harmless, yet it is one of the most toxic substances in our interpersonal atmosphere. Although difficult to detect, it permeates almost every area of our communications. We find it in our communications with our families, friends, businesses, organizations, or any place in which people work together, share information, and make decisions. We call this substance bullshit. <laughs> so, so what exactly is bullshit? <laughs> Philosopher Harry Frankfurt first defined bullshit as that which results from communicating with little to no regard for truth, established knowledge, or what we would call genuine, qualified, or verified evidence. Bullshitting is not simply the act of engaging in casual conversation, although much of our casual conversation does include mass amounts of bullshit. <laughs> bullshitting is also not the same as lying. There is a critical difference between bullshitting and lying. The liar actually knows and cares about the truth. <laughs> and his agenda is to detract us from the truth altogether. On the other hand, the bullshitter doesn't know what the truth is. He doesn't care what the truth is, and he isn't even trying to know. In fact, what the bullshitter says may actually be correct, but he wouldn't know it because he isn't paying any attention to truth, established knowledge, or evidence for his claim. Bullshitting also has more to do with intention than content. I may say Pluto is a planet, and you may say Pluto is a planet. But if I have no care for the truth of that statement, and you, on the other hand, have taken a bit of time to look at the definitions of a planet, taken a bit of time to look at the evidence of astrophysicists, then I'm probably bullshitting, and you are not. Like liars, bullshitters appear to be genuinely concerned with the truth, and oftentimes believe their own bullshit. And <laughs> these are things that make bullshit so difficult to detect. <laughs> to pull off a successful lie, the liar distorts his portrayal of reality and tries to remember his lie. The bullshitter doesn't have these burdens because most often <laughs> he actually believes his own bullshit. Think of how much easier it would be to lie if we didn't have the burden of knowing the truth. It wouldn't feel much like lying at all. But the reason I'm so into studying bullshitting behavior is that bullshitting, having no concern for truth, is much more dangerous than lying. However, our empirical understanding of bullshitting behavior and its consequences is in its infancy. And as an experimental social psychologist who studies bullshit, I want to make certain that what I say isn't an example of what it is that I'm ultimately trying to reduce. <laughs> I can tell you, discovering what we do know hasn't been the easiest road. In fact, my earliest research on bullshit was quite discouraging. In my business as a researcher in an academic institution, our model is one of publish or perish. In order to publish, one must identify variables that matter to the social phenomenon under study. Because people appear willing to talk about anything and everything they know nothing about, I actually experience difficulty in first identifying variables that distinguish when people do and do not engage in bullshitting. What we do know is this. First, People engage in considerable bullshitting when social cues make them feel obligated to provide an opinion about something, even when it is something they know nothing about. And second, people bullshit when they expect it to be relatively easy to pass bullshit. That is, when people detect cues from the social context suggesting that it will be easy to get a 
social passive acceptance or tolerance for their bullshit. So basically, we find bullshit everywhere, and there are only a few situations in which people refrain from this behavior. And they'll do it especially when we make it easy by failing to put up any barriers of intolerance. But why is bullshit such a big problem? Well, as a society, we have developed bullshit incompetence. For instance, suppose you heard someone say, hidden meaning transforms unparalleled abstract beauty. Some people find that to be a profound statement. It isn't. <laughs> it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Now, that is a profound statement. Yet people are influenced by profundity language cues that make senseless bullshit sound profound when it really isn't. What if I told you that Sydney is the capital city of Australia, that styrofoam was invented in Norway, or that weapons of mass destruction are produced in Fredonia? Now, these are false statements. But you are more likely to misremember them as true simply because someone has suggested them to you. If we've heard something before, our brains subconsciously use it as an indication that it's probably true and not an indication that it may be false. Furthermore, cognitive psychologists, people who study attention, memory, and how we process information, teach us that expertise and knowledge don't always save us from the unwanted effects of bullshit. Consider the 4,800 investors who put good money into Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme. Hundreds of investors included banks, investment firms, institutions, pension funds, all with highly educated and sophisticated people managing them. If smart people continue to exchange genuine evidence and readily available information for bullshit, then we ignore our very best snapshots of reality. And without reality, we simply cannot make good decisions. Better information doesn't always lead to better decision-making but better decision-making almost always requires better information. So what do we do about the mountains of bullshit that we face every day? What might life be like, and how might our world run, if rather than being the product of bullshit, judgments and decisions were based on evidence and truth? How can we change our communicative culture to reduce bullshitting and its unwanted effects? Well, first, I want to ask you to do something that you may not have considered before. You're probably not going to believe this, but you are just as susceptible to bullshit as anyone else. And it's critical that you entertain this possibility because, you see, a major source of the unwanted effects of bullshit is that everyone thinks that they can readily detect bullshit and thereby feels unaffected by it, despite research clearly demonstrating that bullshit is not easily det detected. Bullshit is not only the stuff of psychics who speak with the dead, Ouija board enthusiasts, alternative medicine quacks, and hypnotists who retrieve repressed memories from politicians. <laughs> When we look for bullshit, we can more clearly see how it affects things in our daily lives, like our purchase decisions at the wine shop, jewelry dealer, used car dealership, realtor's office, or the decisions we make in our organizations. Second, we need to face the reality that part of the problem is that we often prefer bullshit over the truth. Believing bullshit can feel comfortable. In fact, people have multiple motivations for dealing and, and believing bullshit. And part of that problem has to do with how we are wired. Our confirmation biases are extremely strong. That is, people are strongly wired to attend to information that confirms their preconceived notions and ignore important disconfirming evidence. Likewise, our bullshit filters and detectors are not particularly well-tuned, especially when bullshit aligns with our views of the world. We want to believe we know things we don't. We want to believe we've made the right decisions. The car we purchased, the career we pursued, the person we decided to marry, the school we sent our children to, the candidate we voted for, there is a feeling of security in thinking we're right but there is a liability in pretending we know things we do not. And wanting things to be true doesn't make them so. Third, recall that I said that people bullshit when they expect it to be easy to pass. What would happen if we started calling bullshit more regularly and 
Stop making it so easy to get away with. Susceptibility to bullshit is best explained by our failure to ask important questions about the content we encounter. When people claim that a moon landing was faked, that a, a used car will likely get us another 100,000 miles, that a politician can solve all of our problems, or when a Pollyannish TED Talk speaker tries to save the world again in only 15 minutes. <laughs> we, we should ask ourselves, what agenda might be behind this message? And who is providing the evidence? And what is their credibility? And we should ask the potential bullshitter, why do you think this? How do you know this to be true? What sort of evidence supports your conclusions? Now, calling bullshit can be a serious conversation killer. And we don't want to cut all lines of communication, so let's, let's consider a few rules for dealing with bullshit, first recommended by Carl Bergstrom. Rule number one, don't call bullshit unless you are sure it is bullshit. <laughs> Rule number two, be considerate. Consider the possibility that you are the one who is confused. I've found that even acting a bit confused can prompt the bullshitter to clarify his claim, and clarification <laughs> is a major antidote to bullshit. <laughs> Rule number three, attack the claim and not the person. Rule number four, reduce confusion to an understandable error in reasoning. Doing so is more forgiving and a more subtle pill for the bullshitter to swallow. And rule number five, when you find yourself guilty of bullshitting, just admit the fault. We all make mistakes, so don't double down on your bullshit. It only makes things worse. <laughs> Now, this is very important, so I need you to remember this. Even when conformity is its strongest, oftentimes it only takes one person to stop the unwanted effects of bullshit. We know from research that the influence of what people think they should do can outweigh the power of social norms. Armed with the power of evidence and perhaps a few allies interested in the same, I believe that each one of us can play an important role in the struggle against bullshit. So, communicative climate change. We can blame Facebook, Twitter, and web profiteers all we want for the escalation of bullshit, but at some level, the responsibility comes down to each of us having the ability to search for truth, discern fact from fiction, and communicate what we know to be true, not just what we want or hope to be true. Competent bullshit detection and disposal depend on it. Ignoring that responsibility, now that is complete bullshit. <laughs>